Hey guys, I'm Mikko and in this video I'm gonna talk about character designs. The reason why selling character designs is hard usually comes as a surprise to people who are new to the industry. In this video I'm gonna talk about my own personal experience of selling characters in video game industry because that's what I have experience from but I think it's kind of applicable to animation as well because the same rules apply there as well. I want to preface this video by saying that I have done terrible mistakes when it comes to this specific topic and that's the reason why I have learned these methods and I use this three-step process to make my characters because personally I have found that for me they work most of the time most successfully. That doesn't mean that it's the only way to make characters, it's just my own checklist that I go through to have some sort of like a method to this madness because it can get quite crazy, especially when you're dealing with multiple clients and deadlines at the same time. When my students come to the class to hear about character design, sometimes they're a bit surprised by how little I spend on the visual execution of the design itself. I'm not saying that's not important, because honestly it is, but that's only a small portion of the whole process. Usually that information is pretty accessible online, you can learn about silhouettes and color blocking pretty easily in any of the design courses, but this stuff I feel like isn't talked about, so therefore I think it's more important, because even if you do a great character design, if you're not able to sell it and it gets killed in the process, that makes me feel terrible, honestly. The bigger chunk of character design is understanding the project. Is the character a playable character? What's the genre of this game? What's the camera angle most of the time? What actions are necessary to read well? Is it important to know where the collisions of the character are and how is that visualized to the player? These questions are the most important ones to answer first and I call this category the tools category. If you think about the character as a tool for the player to express themselves in the game world, these questions make the designer figure out how the presentation won't get in the way of the goals the player might have. Context. The next set of questions that I go through is this. What does the world look like? Does the player see the character most of the time against the sky or against the ground? What parts of the anatomy are controlled by animator? Is there a chance to have secondary animation that uses physics? Like for example something like a scarf hanging from the character or other things that are controlled by the physics of the world. Can the character movement be linked to the dynamics of the game in a way that expresses the personality of the character itself or the player that is playing that character in that game? Does the character design itself express mechanics that would otherwise require a distracting UI element? because the players will most likely be looking at the character most of the time in the game, that's a perfect area on screen to express useful information for the player. Does the character appearance change throughout the course of this story? And this brings me to the last but not least important category of these three, and that is story. To make this video as efficient as possible, I'm going to condense story a little bit. It's going to seem very dumped down, but these are the most important parts of the story. This doesn't represent the whole story of every storyline ever made. So in my view, every story can be condensed into three points. The character wants something, there's an obstacle to getting that thing, and then there's that object that they want, the conclusion where they reach that point. This is called plot. This is not story. Story is a development of the character as well. The character goes through this chain of events and then the character ends up as a completely different person at the end of this thing. Somehow the experiences that happen throughout that process change the character itself. A very common hero's journey is a selfish character turns into very unselfish, altruistic, self-sacrificing character in the end. If you've seen any movie ever, basically the first five minutes that like show the main character and the situation that they are in and the kind of personality that they have at that point, that's a huge spoiler because you know that by the end of this movie they are going to be the complete opposite of that 
first five minutes. So when you see the first introduction of the character, you know that the writers are probably thinking that how can we contrast this with the journey that the character goes through and how they change throughout these events. Now you might be wondering, Mikko, how does this have anything to do with selling the character? Your design might be well executed, a beautiful clearly done drawing, but by itself it won't go through the production pipeline. Even a medium sized or a small game costs millions to make and most game projects do not make a profit. So when your publishers sees the piece they might have a completely opposite idea of what the designs should look like. And this is not because they're evil men in suits, it's because they have actual data about the way the market works. However, this doesn't mean that you should throw all artistic integrity into the garbage bin and use publisher's notes as a checklist on how to get things done. In fact, by doing this, you're just telling the publisher, we need your help because we have no idea what we are doing. Publishers hate this. If there's one thing that the publishers hate more than anything in the world, it's when developers clearly communicate that they don't know what they're doing because you have invested all of this money into them giving you up this product and then you realize that they are completely lost and they need constant supervision and help to reach that goal. And this is surprisingly common <laughs> in, in all video game projects. Teams that end up changing the whole game concept in the middle of development are ones that will always miss deadlines, they end up costing the publisher more money and they are just a very risky investment for the publisher. And all the people that are working for the publisher, they want the game to be released, they want it to be successful, they don't want to be led into that situation where they have to make a decision that like, should we cut the funding or are we going to take a bigger risk by continuing the funding for one more year so that the team can get this thing finished. That's the decision that they don't want to make because they want the product to be finished and those are hard decisions and you as a developer forcing them into that situation is just very, very bad practice. Nobody wants to do work for nothing. Everybody wants to show up to work and work towards a finished product. Even the publishers, they don't want to just sit there and cut projects because they feel like it or it's fun. It's not fun and they have invested a lot of time and thought into the project. So it's kind of up to the developer to also do their part and meet deadlines and get the product done. So when you submit your character design, I strongly suggest that you somehow communicate these three points, the tools, the context and the story. You can do this by just having an image of the character, but also have another sheet where you input these three categories in simple sentences. I don't recommend writing huge paragraphs because they won't be reading those. If you can kind of condense it into one or two sentences, that increases the chances of people actually reading those sentences. So one line for tools category, one for context and one for story. You don't have to explain the genre of the game because the publishers already know what project the image is coming from. Let's say this character is for a side-scrolling physics-based platformer. Sometimes he rolls down hills but uses little paws to gain extra speed at steep hills. For this I might write down round body rolls down hills easily. Paws can be used for climbing and jumping. That's tools. Then for context, amount of green moss on body signals the remaining stamina left for climbing obstacles. And story is more about mood here. Playful puppy that's unaware of the chaos left in its wake by its sheer mass. So if you noticed, I have sneaked in emotional power words into some of these sentences and that's always gives you extra points when you're trying to sell a character design. And if you are in a conversation with the publisher on a phone or on a Skype call, you have done the visual design process based on these questions. You have done visual problem solving and that's the job of the concept artist. When you can clearly communicate that these are the questions that this design is answering, that gives them kind of thrust 
to understand that you are understanding what this project is and your design is making it work the best way that it can work. So they might have tweaks or like additions that they want you to do to the design but when you can communicate that these are the requirements of the projects then you can keep the conversation within those boundaries so that the publisher can also understand that like we can for example have extremely long legs because that would look silly when the character is rolling downhill. So when you can make them understand the design process, you will make them aware that these are the doors that we have already closed because they proved not to be useful for the end goals of this pro product if we want to make it successful. Then you can keep the conversation iterative. So you can iterate on that design and make it better without going into a completely different direction and having just a completely different design from scratch because that's not iterative process, that's shotgun design, and that's wasting everybody's money and time, and of course patience. When you can communicate clearly your design process when you are presenting it, you have much higher chance of selling it, because you understand the process and you are working for the team. Okay, that's my talk on character design, and I hope this can reduce your frustration in the future when you work in the video game industry and just be prepared for this selling process because just throwing images out there in internet space won't be enough. You will need to do the selling process. So it might sound tough, but I think it's important to discuss this part of the process. And when you're prepared for it, you can be more successful in your life and in your career. Okay, thank you for listening to this talk. I hope you like my rock dog, Rob because I, I really enjoyed painting it. Go and paint awesome stuff and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.